This is the city, Jerusalem, once the glory of the kingdom of Israel, now a forgotten backwater at the far end of the Roman Empire. It's usually quiet in the city, and I like it that way. My name is Spade, Saul Spade. I'm a detective. Hmm. It was a Sunday morning in Jerusalem, and the paper was filled with the usual stories. Roman crackdowns, tax increases, and the latest juicy rumors about King Herod's love life. I was just flipping to the sports page to check the gladiator scores when there was a knock on my office door. It's open. You saw Spade, the private eye. That's what it says on the door. My name's Caiaphas. I'm the chief priest. Yeah, I know who you are. I read the papers. What brings you to this neighborhood? We don't get many Pharisees on this side of the tracks. Tracks? What tracks? The donkey tracks. You must have seen them when you came in. What can I do for you, Chief? I want you to find somebody for me. A missing poison. You're in luck. That's one of my specialties. So what is it, a kidnapping? Something like that. Who am I looking for? Another priest? Pharisee, maybe? Yeah, I want you to find a guy named Jesus. That's a pretty common name. Not much to go on. He's known around town as Jesus of Nazareth. Now we're getting somewhere. Hey, wait a minute. That name rings a bell. Say it again. Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> see what I mean? <laughs> to me, I read something about this guy. Let me see. Yeah, here it is in the crime reports. Jesus of Nazareth. Says here he was crucified on Friday. That's right. Congratulate me, Chief. What for? I just solved the case. You'll find your man in the graveyard. That'll be 50 shekels, plus expenses. What expenses? I'll think of something. Not so fast, babe. I've already been to the graveyard. He's not there. That's why I came to you. There are going to be rumors going around the city that this Jesus is risen from the dead. We need you to find his body and find it quick before things get out of hand. Risen from the dead, huh? That's a pretty wild story. Who was this guy anyway? Just a crazy preacher, that's all. I don't think so. You wouldn't be here if he was just another preacher. There's something you're not telling me. All right, all right, I'll tell you everything I know. His followers claimed that he was the Messiah, the Deliverer, and the Prophet said he would come. Now they say he's proven it by rising from the dead. That's why I need you to find who took his body before people start believing that it's true. And what if it is true? Don't be a wise guy. Of course it isn't true. When the Messiah comes, he'll be a warrior or a king. Not some two-bit carpenter from Nazareth. You go find him and find him fast. And we'll make it worth your while. Say, doy the pieces of silver. That should just about do it. I decided that the best place to stop was the scene of the crime. If this was a crime, not just somebody's idea of a practical joke. Of course, the local cops got there first, and were not exactly happy to see me. Well, well, if it isn't my favorite flatfoot, Centurion Flavius Linnaeus O'Malley. <laughs> what brings you here, O'Malley? Tired of writing parking tickets outside the forum? Speed! As if I don't have enough problems. You just keep moving, pal, and leave the detective work up to the professionals. Yeah, I'm happy to see you, too. So what's the story, O'Malley? I've been hearing some pretty strange rumors. There's nothing strange about it. It's a plain old grave robbery, an open and shut case. Open and shut, huh? I can see from the broken Roman seal that your boys did the shutting. Question is, who did the opening? I'm warning you, Spade. Stay out of this. You're biting off more than you can chew. I doubt it, O'Malley. I got a pretty big mouth. 
Uh, excuse me, uh, Centurion O'Malley? Uh, the governor would like to see you. The governor? Well, say it's preserve us. I told you two lunkheads this would happen. What am I going to tell him? Oh, you could tell him the truth. The truth? Don't be ridiculous. It put me in the loony bin. <laughs> loony. That's a funny word. Say it. Loony. Loony. <laughs> right. That is fun. Loony. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to ask you two. I have to give Pilot some kind of explanation. You two stay here and guard the tomb. I tried to get it right this time. So, I'm guessing from what O'Malley said that you two were on guard here last night. Uh, yeah, that's right. So what went wrong? <coughs> well, strictly speaking, nothing went wrong. <laughs> that's right. Our orders were uh, to guard the tomb and not let anyone in. They didn't say anything about not letting anyone out. <laughs> Seems like that wouldn't be an issue if whoever was inside was dead. Oh, yeah, uh, you would think so, wouldn't you? So what really happened here last night? Not supposed to tell anybody. Or, uh, if we do, we're just supposed to say that we fell asleep. So, did you fall asleep? Are you kidding me? In a graveyard? At night? You think I'm crazy? <laughs> Maybe you think you're loony. <laughs> 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 so, suppose you clowns tell me what really happened. No way. We promised the centurion we wouldn't say anything to anybody. Especially about the angel. Yeah, and the earthquake. And the stone rolling away from the front of the tomb all by itself? That was kind of scary. I wasn't scared. What do you mean you weren't scared? You fainted. How do you know? You fainted first! Yeah, but when I woke, you were on top of me. Oh, yeah. Uh, so anyways, babe, you're not going to get any information out of us. Don't even try. I wouldn't dream of it. I can see you two are too good at keeping secrets. So, did anybody else witness any of this? Uh, bad information's classified. That's right. I wouldn't even tell my own mother about the two women that were here. That's right. Though I certainly wouldn't tell you. Tell me what? About the two Marys who were here first thing this morning. Two Marys, huh? You know where I could find them? I do. The two Marys. <gasps> How did you find out about that? <laughs> who have you been talking to? Maybe we should take another question, Claudius. That's a good idea, fellas. If you bring in an important suspect like me, O'Malley will probably give you a medal. Tell you what, why don't you two go on ahead and get the interrogation room ready? Good idea. Let's go, Brutus. I bet we'll get a promotion. <laughs> now that they were gone, I had a chance to look at the tomb. There was no sign of forced entry, no sign of anything. Just some grave clothes lying where the body should have been. I was about to head back to the city to see if I could track down the two Marys, but I didn't have to. They got to me first, along with a guy I'd seen around town, a guy named Peter. It's true! He's not there! He has risen! Has he? Or did you and your friend steal the body to make it look like he's risen? Who are you? My name's Spade. Saul Spade. I'm a detective. <laughs> nice theme music. Thanks. I'm glad you like it. Now why don't you come clean and tell me what really happened here? Isn't it obvious? Not to me. Suppose you fill me in on what you two were doing here so early this morning. Well, because it was almost the Sabbath when Jesus died, we didn't have a chance to get him ready for a proper burial. We just put him in the tomb and waited until the Sabbath was over this morning. But when we got here, the ground started shaking and the stone rolled away. And a man, all dressed in white and shining like a bright light, said, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He is risen just as he said he would. Then he told us to go and tell the disciples, so we ran and got Peter. I didn't believe him at first, but now that I see the empty tomb, I think it must be true. 
Jesus did say that this would happen. I just didn't understand it at the time. But now I do. He has risen from the dead. Come on. We have got to go tell the others. I watched them running toward the city, shouting and laughing. They sure didn't act like grave robbers. They acted more like people who just found out that someone they loved, who they thought was dead, was really alive. You must be Mr. Spade! Ah! What, are you crazy? Don't sneak up behind people in graveyards. You almost gave me a heart attack. Well, sorry about that. But I heard that Caiaphas had hired you, and I thought I'd come and tell you that you don't need to waste your time here. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Uh... My name is Joseph. Joseph of Arimathea, and this is my tomb. Your tomb? You're trying to tell me you're risen from the dead, too? No, I was a secret follower of Jesus. But when the other Pharisees arranged to have him killed, I was so ashamed that I came forward and offered my tomb for him to be buried in. So I guess your secret is out. Yes, it is. And now that Jesus has risen, I want the whole world to know that I am his follower. So you really believe this resurrection story? I believe it with my whole heart, and you should believe it too. I should? Why's that? Because it proves that Jesus is the Messiah. So, he's going to deliver us from the Romans. I can't wait. No, Mr. Spade, you don't understand. Jesus didn't die to rise from the dead and save us from the Romans. He died and rose again to save us from our sin. He's the savior of the whole world. That's a little hard to believe. I'm sure it is, but it is true just the same. And I'll tell you, Mr. Spade, don't waste your time on this case. So you don't think I can find Jesus? Oh, I know you can find Jesus. In fact, I hope you do. But you won't find a body. No matter how good a detective you are, you can't find something that isn't there. He's alive, Mr. Spade, and the whole world will never be the same again. So there you have it. Since that day in the graveyard, I've talked to dozens of people who say they've seen Jesus with their own eyes. I've decided to tell Caiaphas he can keep his 30 pieces of silver. I can't solve the case of the missing Messiah, because the Messiah was never missing in the first place.